Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works. I've just finished creating this little side table and tufted ottoman in 112 scale, and I'd like to share the process with you. As with most of my miniature builds, these pieces are created by cutting out lightweight chipboard using the Cricut Maker, and then assembling them until they resemble miniature pieces carved from ancient oak using your Cricut Maker or other electronic cutting machine, you'll have these table legs that I'll show you how to assemble and this almost pie crust tabletop. Here are the leg assemblies for the ottoman and the top and also a tufting guide. And then some panels and framework for the top of the ottoman. These pieces can be set aside. We won't be using them. And don't forget to save those offcuts. You never know when they'll come in handy. Assembly of the pieces can be approached in any order that suits you. I just happen to choose to begin with the main leg assembly for the side table. I'm laminating together four layers of 22 point or lightweight chipboard using zig two-way glue and a pair of fine tipped tweezers to help me align all of the pieces. Once all four layers have been glued, a brayer is used to press them firmly together. Now I'll repeat this same laminating process with one half of the rest of the leg assembly. Again, four layers of lightweight chipboard make up this half of the other leg. It's glued together and then pressed into place and then the other half is created in exactly the same manner. Next I'll begin assembling the top of the side table. This consists of four octagons of lightweight chipboard that are glued together. I'm often asked why I use different adhesives for different pieces all within the same project. And this is a good time to discuss that. For the framework for the tabletop, I'm using the Zig two-way glue which comes in a handy applicator pen, making it easy to work with small and delicate areas. But for larger, flat areas, I'm turning to a heavier duty, less delicate adhesive, such as Yoohoo or Fabri-Tac. Now that the table components have been completed, I'll turn my attention to working on the leg assemblies for the ottoman. These consist of four layers each of lightweight chipboard laminated together and I do my very best to line everything up as accurately as possible. I'm not perfect, but it's close enough. Later steps in the process will help to smooth away any of the striations along the exteriors that will give away the fact that these pieces are made from layers and layers of paper. With the two longer side assemblies complete, I now turn my attention to the shorter leg assemblies. And these all have construction tabs built into them so that the final piece will just almost snap together. And that's it for the leg assembly for the ottoman. Super simple. Now I'm going to laminate together these two pierced panels that will act as a tufting guide. Here I'm using Yoohoo rather than the Zig two-way because I have a larger flat area to cover and I'm not concerned about a lot of little fussy bits. I also laminate together the two plain panels that are exactly the same size, and then I press both of these firmly with a brayer.
Now I'll turn my attention to the panels that make up the top of the ottoman. These four layers all have slots cut in the same position, so as you line them up, those slots remain clear. This will make adding the leg assemblies a little later in the process extremely easy. Now I'll glue together the four frame shapes. These are going to act as a bounding box around the tufted panel that I'll be creating a little bit later on. Because these pieces are narrow and delicate, it's easiest for me to work with the Zig two-way glue pen as I layer each of these together. I try to remember to press together all of the layers using a brayer as I complete each step. All of these pieces working together will create the underpinnings for the tufted upholstered top of the ottoman. Now that all of the layers have been glued together, it's time to begin transforming this lightweight chipboard into a substance that resembles ancient hardwood. And this is achieved by using a water thin super glue. Now I've recently discovered this needle tip applicator bottle and I'm never giving it up because it does several things for me simultaneously. Firstly, it reduces the amount of super glue that is required to cover each of these components. And it also helps me control the application to a much finer degree than I was capable of previously. It's now definitely become a must have tool in my arsenal. So each of the pieces that has been laminated together is now hardened on all sides using super glue. Now I choose to use Starbond super glue, but that's just a personal preference. Any thin super glue will do the job. When the super glue pools onto the surface, I use an old gift card to help smooth it out and help it absorb into the surface of the chipboard. Because that's the main purpose here, is to impregnate the fibers of the chipboard with the strength and the hardening action of the super glue. This is the magic that transforms flimsy chipboard into wood. Please make sure you have adequate ventilation when working with this amount of cyanoacrylate glue. The fumes can be pretty intense, so have an open window or a fan or both and a respirator if you're chemically sensitive or just want to be particularly responsible, unlike some of us. So it is a bit of a tedious process, but I'm telling you this needle tipped bottle has turned something that was almost a chore into a joy. I love working with this thing. And as you can see, it makes very quick work of covering all of these fiddly bits with an even application of super glue that really requires very little rubbing in in order to smooth it out. I verify that I've covered both sides of all the pieces and it looks like we are ready for sanding. Now here's another piece of what I've come to regard as essential equipment and it's known to manicurists worldwide as a nail drill. It's really just sort of a lightweight Dremel style rotary tool that accepts a variety of bits. 
and I find it extremely easy to work with and so helpful for sanding miniatures. By the time you finish hardening all of the pieces and sanding the edges, the rest will all have cured. And now it's time to really begin the assembly. This is the leg assembly for the table, and it has one central component that is flanked by two halves that slot into it, one half on either side. It makes more sense to show you than to try to explain it verbally. Here you see me pressing one half of the assembly into the slots on the center panel. And now I'm applying a little bit of adhesive to its opposite number, turning it over and pressing those tabs into the slot. Once that's been completed, I reinforce the join with super glue. Now it's time to think about aligning the tabletop on top of the legs. It will fit like this. Apply adhesive to the upper edge of the leg assembly. Place the tabletop face down and center the legs to the best of your ability, reinforcing the join with super glue. Now let's put together the legs for the ottoman. I'm beginning by applying a little bit of adhesive to the upper edge of the longer leg assemblies and slotting them into place. Next, I apply adhesive to both the top and the sides of the shorter end pieces. Press them into the remaining slots and then click the corners into place. I have to admit, this is incredibly satisfying. <laughs> but then again, I'm easily amused. The pieces are designed so that once assembled, the top of the ottoman should be smooth to the touch. The metal tip of the precision applicator bottle that I use will become clogged almost every time it sits for a few moments. But that's easily cleared by burning away the glue using an open flame. Now, of course, use caution when doing this, but I do it multiple times every day and have suffered no ill effects as a result. At this point, I've sanded and smoothed all of the surfaces to the best of my ability and I'm verifying that everything is properly sealed with super glue. This piece is very, very sturdy, but to disguise the construction slots and tabs, I'm using a touch of Popper's Bondo over those rough areas. This is a tried and true woodworking technique that has been in use for generations. I just happened to be lucky enough to have stumbled across it a few years ago and have never looked back. As you can see, it's incredibly tough and stands up to a lot of abuse from metal files and emery boards leaving a silky smooth finish in its wake. Now I'm a bit of a sanding fanatic. You may or may not spend this much time smoothing out the surfaces of your pieces. For me, it's definitely a contemplative and again, a very satisfying process. And now we move from miniature woodworking to miniature upholstery, which is definitely not my forte, but I'm going to give it a go. I'm cutting several layers of cotton quilt batting sized to fit over our tufting template. And I'm going to glue these layers onto this little pierced panel. 
beginning with a layer that's roughly the same size and then reducing the size of subsequent layers until I have a total of four layers in graduated sizes, all glued one on top of the other. Now I'm choosing to use these metal beads, a scrap of woven fabric, and I thought I would use that waxed cord, but opted for upholstery thread instead in the long run. The first step in my process is to turn the piece over on a sanding sponge and pierce all the way through the holes of the template using a needle tool. Then I turn the piece over again and pierce from the other side. Now, threading a needle is, again, not something that I'm very adept at. In fact, I'd say that my hand sewing skills are pretty abysmal. Let's see, I think I'll work with the side of the fabric that has a black background. So I will put that face down on my sanding sponge to sort of hold it in place while I do my best to center the tufting template over the top. And then I will pierce through all of the layers using a carpet needle and upholstery thread. I'm going to tack that thread into place on the back of the template using Popper's Bondo. You could also use a hot glue gun for this operation, whatever's easiest for you. That just holds the thread in place while I pick up one of the metal beads, draw it down the thread until it's against the surface of the fabric and then pierce back through that same hole in the template, which I'm telling you is easier said than done. But somehow I managed to do it and I pull the thread taut. Again, I tack it into place between each stitch using a tiny bit of Popper's Bondo. I pull the thread through again to the right side, thread a bead onto the needle, and pierce back through the hole. I pull it taut, tack it in place, and repeat until the entire pattern is finished. I felt so awkward while doing this, but that's how we learn is to just attempt things that we're not entirely comfortable with. And the results, although certainly not professional looking, are good enough for me to enjoy them. And that's what this is all about. It's about using our creativity to enjoy ourselves, to make the things that make us happy and I wanted a tufted ottoman. So I had to go through the process of struggling through miniature tufting in order to create one. Hopefully my next attempt will be a little less amateurish and a little more pleasing to my eye. But for now, I can honestly say I'm proud of myself for having even attempted it. Once all of the tufting is in place, of course, it's time to glue down all of the margins onto the back of that tufting panel. And again, this results in something that looks pretty lumpy and hideous to my eye, but we will be hiding those crimes. This is how it will all fit together. Remember the two plain little panels? Well, I'll be using those to add a tiny bit of gimp or sort of braided cording that will peek out just a little bit beyond the edge of the upholstered panel. I'm just gluing this in place with Yuhu.
Okay, so now that that trim is in place, it's time to glue that hideous pack onto it and we'll never have to see it again. I press everything firmly into place and now I'm going to glue the frame onto the upper surface of the ottoman. The upholstered panel will nestle inside of this framework, but for now I'm going to clamp everything in place and allow it to set up for a few minutes. Yep, it fits perfectly. After the frame has set up, I smooth all the edges and reapply super glue to any of the areas that have been exposed by that sanding. And then it's time to apply adhesive to the top of the ottoman and to pop the upholstered panel into place. There. Construction is complete. Now it's time for finishes. I've been experimenting lately with adding layers of translucent washes instead of attempting to achieve a realistic wood look using acrylic paints. And I really like the effects that I get by creating do-it-yourself coffee stain and adding that as a base layer. I'm creating a sort of sloppy base over everything with this first pass and then drying it with a heat tool and it dries really quickly, which I appreciate. Then I come back and begin distressing with emery boards. I want to expose some of the lighter underlying color of the hardened chipboard so that I can now apply a warm golden tone in the form of this distress stain. That's going to warm up the color. You can see here the comparison. Once that's been done, I come back in with more of the darkened coffee stain and add a little bit more aging and weathering. Anywhere that I find I've been a bit too heavy handed, I can knock back by hitting it again with an emery board and just sanding away some of that finish. I love this finish actually. It's so easy and fast to apply and yet I find that the results feel really authentic to me. There's something very rich and warm about the wood tones that emerge from this blend of cardboard and coffee stain and a touch of golden stain. Then to finish the piece off, I turn to one of my favorite finishing techniques, which is to apply what I suppose you could call a super glue varnish. That means a final layer of super glue over the top, which isn't completely absorbed. So it seals and protects the piece and also adds to the feeling of antiquity. Oh, and it intensifies the underlying colors of the finishes that have been applied. And I really like that. It's so fast to apply. I can't think of another clear top coat that is so easy to apply and dries so quickly, leaving you with a rock hard finish that will be impervious to wear for a long time to come. I just smooth it over the surface using a cut up old gift card. Works like a charm. 
And that's it for this installment in the ongoing saga of the abandoned boudoir diorama. I love these little pieces. They're sturdy and serviceable and oh so charming. Thank you, as always, for hanging out with me today. I hope this video was useful or helpful to you in some small way. And I hope that you have a wonderful day, my friends. Until next time, bye.